Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, or should I say, One Gigantic Thing with some wheels on it. Uh, I'm Tom Brandt, this is Matt Buzzy, and we are here with you on PC Mag's Daily Show where we talk to you about one cool thing that we've been reviewing here or testing out in PC Labs. Today, the one cool but giant thing is the Acer Predator Orion 9000. It is, uh, as you can see here, a gaming desktop, but no. it, <laughs> it doesn't look like any gaming desktop you've probably seen, even if you're used to ostentatious gaming desktop design. So we, we love to tell you all about this machine, uh, wheel it around for you, take off this cover. Yes, we will. We will take the, off the cover, show you what's inside. Um, but we want to know what you have, what questions you've got. So please type those in the comments if you're watching this right now on Facebook. If you're watching this somewhere else, YouTube or wherever else it might be on the interwebs, uh, come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. and you can ask us questions on Facebook then because we do this every day. <laughs> so, what do we have here with this Price Editor? <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Start Predator over, start over. Get it right. Orion 9000. Thank you. Um, we have a lot. We have a lot. Um, this thing, as configured, is an $8,000 desktop. Okay. But you can get the same case with obviously less powerful, but still pretty powerful components for $2,500. Um, it's huge. I think let's just, you know, let's just acknowledge that. It's enormous. Um, let's get that out of the way. Um, it's got a lot of lighting. Not a lot of, actually, no, I'll take that back. Not a lot of lighting considering. Yeah. There, there are some lights. There are some lights. It's, it's a tasteful amount of lighting, I would say. It's sort of this front, this front business, um, kind of nice outline. Uh, blue is the default, but you can change all these colors. That's just kind of what their branding is doing. Um, blue inside as well. We'll take the door off in a hot second. Um, you can see it while I'm turning it. The, the fans through the front grill is a pretty it's a pretty sweet look. Yeah, so um, there's actually three coolers, two on the front and yeah. one in the back. And there's two there's fans up here for and, the and more, which okay. is the radiator for the uh, for the CPU yeah. cooler. Um, so yeah, it's it's thoughtfully designed for uh, for cooling. There's some internal uh, other internal stuff as well, like a vent that guides the fan and take from the front into the back to cool the storage devices. Um, there's, yeah, it's called like Ice Tunnel 2.0 mm -hmm. is their whole cooling system, um, which, you know, thank God, because 1.0, as you, as you all know, <laughs> yeah, was yeah. just not good enough. Um, the one thing that I noticed about this the one, uh, there's only one thing? Is, yeah, besides the wheels, <laughs> which we didn't actually show oh, you, right. we've got to show you the wheels. It has wheels and handles, so you can, so you can get, a, so, you get it in and out of your LAN parties very easily. Right, so obviously we, we've tested a few other desktops that are, you know, in the stratospheric price realm, like, yeah. Like uh, yeah yeah actually here let's let's go ahead and and, and you know okay just, so just this is show. this is how easy it is the to move action. this what eighty pounds how much how it's much like forty five pounds forty five pounds so yeah forty five pounds butt wheels so the one thing that you notice about this is it's it's actually you know fairly understated black um, yep. and and can you make get this in any other color I think this case is this case and you you get what you see so that's a lot of money to spend on a just a black desktop yeah. but it's not mm -hmm. just a black desktop because we're gonna tell you what's inside of it's it. it's not just a black desktop it is mostly other than these door uh, it is mostly plastic which is maybe is a little disappointing yeah. for this much money um, it, it feels sturdy and everything but it's just you know some there's some nice metal um, not that there's a lot of eight thousand dollar desktops to compare to out there but there's a there's a handful in, in my review you can see um, uh, there's enough to compare it to, um, but some of those you get you like get like a premium metal sort of build. So, so what else do you get that's that you might be like you know if you're planning on spending eight thousand dollars on right. a desktop, what can you expect? Well, okay, let's open up the door and talk about the components because okay. obviously the components, not the case, are what's driving the price up sure. so high. Sure. The door has these two uh, screws on it that don't have to come out all the way. You can just you can loosen them and leave them in. They have grommets on the back, so they won't come out all the way. Um, the window, I'll say, for like the size of the case, the window's like almost weirdly small just because it like, if there's a border and then it kind of cuts off. So like, yeah, you can see inside, but it's not like as much, it's not as huge as you would think considering how big the case is. Um, that said, um, this is what you get inside. There's some, some nice more blue, uh, blue lighting as you can see. Um, there's, a, there's a shroud to keep the PSUs, uh, this is part of Ice Tunnel 2.0, of course, uh, <laughs> right, to right. keep the, the PSUs power and heat can self-contain and out of the system. Um, so for this configuration, for this much money, for eight, the eight thousand dollars SKU, uh, that I believe is the topped out one, um, it's two NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti's. You know, one one of those is very good. Two is two is kind of insane. Um, there is a Core i9 18 mm -hmm. core processor. So you know, it's it's a little fast. Uh, the 128 gigabytes of RAM as well. Um, this would be a, that is insane. That's 128 insane. 128 gigabytes of memory. I yeah. mean, do you need that to play games? Uh, we can talk no, about that later. You don't. <laughs> you really don't. Um, 
But this is like a video editor's dream right. computer. Two graphics cards, uh, you know, all that RAM, uh, 18 cores. You, you, your multi-threaded your multi tasks will be f screaming. Uh, there is 512 gigabyte boot SSD and a, ter a two terabyte hard drive, so there's storage out the wazoo. But presumably there's more room for additional drives, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, so if you, of course, you feel obligated to say, like, yes, not everyone's buying the $8,000 SKU, obviously. Right. That's right. a pretty niche crew. Um, the $2,500 model, um, still well equipped. It's, uh, it's one 1080 Ti. It's a new processor that's, um, I think it's an 8700K. Um, 16 gigs of RAM. There's still like two terabytes of storage and a, and a uh, 256 SSD, I think. So it's still pretty good. You're just, you're dropping off a lot of like different rungs on the, on each component. And you're kind of, right. um, but that's that's where you can that's where you can get in the door, or you can find a middle ground in between there somewhere. Um, yeah. So if you'd like if you'd like a very well designed case, which it sounds like this is, yeah, especially yeah. with that that isolation of heat on mm -hmm. the power supply, um, the entry level point is twenty five hundred, which frankly is not that bad for a you know for pre built a pre built premium, gaming like, desktop yeah, with a ten eighty ti. Right. Yeah. Those components are still pretty good. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I mean, I've built um, I've built my own desktop for around two thousand, and that that has this, that has better components than what I put in mine. So right. I think all said, having them build it for you and getting it premium, it's not it's not too overpriced. Uh, those are those are all pretty good parts. You could probably save a, a bit of money, um, but you can't get the case, you know. So there's that. Um, now you might not like the case. That might be a different <laughs> thing. You might want those components in your own tower. Yeah. I did say in my review, not everyone's gonna like this <clears> design. <throat> it's a bit aggressive, um, but it's a it's not it's not. But work like it's not terrible, right? Um, I just don't think everyone necessarily wants this. Yeah, on their on their system. Yeah, the big, the big, I'm pointing to the big Predator logo on the window. Um, I actually kind of like the Predator logo. It's weird. I don't know why it appeals to me when it's like sitting on the CPU cooler like this, and this kind of the logo glowing on the SLI bridge is kind of cool. Yeah, but the, uh, I don't know what it is about this. Like it's just it's a lot. But overall, though, the inside <laughs> is fairly. You know, there's there's nothing like that pops out about about the inside to me. The, the, the SLI bridge, as you said, has a logo on it, but the graphics cards are pretty plain. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 inside. Yeah, there's some there's some lighting, but there's it's not a crazy. We, you know, we see some some systems in this. Um, I said in my review, there's some comparable systems. Uh, the Falcon Northwest yeah. has the Talon. You can get this high. Um, Origin has the Genesis. You can get configured this high. Um, the the Origin and uh, there's one other system. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, those have the interiors that are really like flashy. There's mm -hmm. piping. There's liquid. There's uh, there's you know there's a big glass window um, looks a little more a little more pop for that much money this mm -hmm. this on the inside it looks clean looks high tech but it's not like it's not like stunningly stunningly visual I don't think let's go ahead and take a question did you mention whether you can customize the lights on it yes you can change the lighting color there's the Predator Sense software which you can do things like profiles for cooling and heat and all that stuff and um, like the V lighting colors as well. Now, does that also let you uh, change the clock speed of the GPU and the so, CPU? So I'm glad you asked. Yes, because I think it's actually different software. Maybe uh, there's something there's either in that software or a different included software. There's the um, ability to overclock. There's three settings for the CPU. You can do like normal boost and turbo or something. I forget what their names are. Okay. Normal fast and turbo. Okay. Um, there's a turbo button here on the top of the system. I can't really show you. Um, it, it just says it, turbo. It says turbo. <laughs> it launches the CPU into turbo. Okay. Now, being a desktop, sometimes on a laptop, you might not always want to run that because you want to save power, you want to right. save battery, whatever it is. You want it to be as loud or overheated. Yeah. If it's a desktop this big, um, I almost feel like just keep the turbo on. Right, like right. It's, it's, you're going to run, you're just going to sit there. Maybe the fans get a little louder. Maybe the system yeah. heats up a little bit. But you bought a big desktop that can do all these things. And specifically, keep it, keep sorry, it going. Yeah, specifically with that Core i9 pro processor mm -hmm. in here, there's really... You know, you're buying that for the ability to push above the clock speed, and actually, there the, the fans just split up, up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you might not be able to hear that, but yeah, you're you're buying it for the, that additional clock speed. Well, and for the cores, but um, yeah. there, yeah, the, as you said, there's little reason not to keep it running at a higher clock speed. Uh, but presumably, you can also go into the BIOS and actually, you know, change uh, set individual clock speeds as mm. well. Uh, rather than just low, high, and low, medium, and high. Yeah, <laughs> uh, really, you can tinker as much as you want right. to tinker or yeah. not, and just be like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. This turbo button says yeah. turbo. I'm going to hit yeah. turbo. I also, while we're here, um, forgot to show you, there's uh, a yes. headset stand, of course, the most okay. useful feature. Hang your, hang your gaming headset. Um, and this also drops down. 
Uh, there's a CD drive in there for, you know. Not DVDs? For playing the, uh, okay, probably a DVD drive, yes. Hopefully a probably DVD drive. Um, for for eight thousand dollars, I would hope so. Um, and uh, yeah, that that you know, burn your burn your favorite hits, you know, your favorite movies right on there, play them. Um, yeah, I don't know who's necessarily using CDs, but uh, and then um, obviously the front ports are on the top here, which yeah. you also can't see above the turbo button. Just USBs, a USB, three USB uh, three point and a USB C, along with with headset and mic jacks. Now, do I see gonna Thunderbolt go, three on we're gonna here? Go, we're gonna go rear. I yeah, let's look at the rear. I don't, I don't think see the any um, Thunderbolt three. I don't 3. think the, uh, the USB Cs have Thunderbolt three actually. So that's a major downside if you. Um, are using this as a video editing station because you can't plug in any Thunderbolt 3 external drives. On the other hand, there is enough room in here for you to put additional drives in the system. Sure. But uh, it seems like they it would be nice for them to put Thunderbolt 3 yeah, in I here. don't recall that having Thunderbolt 3. Um, more ports back here. I mean, it's it's nothing like, it's nothing crazy. There's, uh, I think, five more USB ports altogether. Ethernet, um, a host of audio lines, and then the two graphics cards have uh, NVIDIA's usual uh, three display ports and an HDMI connection. Um, and that's kind of it around back. You can see the fan, the fan lights. Um, this is all metal. Um, but yeah, there's not like a ton fancy going on back here either. Yeah, I would hope that um, you would be able to pretty much get you know, anything that you would want inside this system, obviously, drives. Uh, well, there's already an SLI, you know, two, the dual graphics yeah. card configuration. Um, so you've got all that, you've spent between 2,500 and 8,000, there, are there additional configurations in there, there as well? I don't think there's as many as I, as I maybe expected, but there are at least okay. one or so two. So there, there are a few. Yeah. Um, now, so you've got that, you've taken it home, you've plugged it in, what can you expect to do with it? Um, it could do obviously everything. I mean, if you're gonna spend that much, <laughs> if it, it, it's a little like, it's a little obvious to, or like it's, it's difficult to praise it for like doing as insane, you know, things as it can right. do when, yeah, when it, $8,000, you better hope that it does insane things. Um, that said, uh, video editing, if you do any media projects on this, obviously gaming, but we'll get to that, but um, the reason you just spend extra is uh, it can do, if, you, if you're a professional and you, you play on it and you do work on it, um, if you're an engineer running CAD, if you're, like, the, the multi, the multi-threaded tasks, um, because of the processor, are, they fly, and, right. um, you know, so whatever, whatever you want to do besides gaming, and obviously it's like general everyday use, it, it flies. And that's one of the things that we actually saw when we tested, we, we tested a Dell system that was similarly priced to this last fall. I believe it was the uh, a Alienware Area 51 mm. Special Edition, and what happened was, you that know, was only like five thousand. And that, okay, that was only yeah. five thousand dollars. But yeah. what, what we saw is only. one of the one of the main reasons to when you get into the upper price stratosphere is you can actually, you know, play uh, a demanding game and do something else at the same time yes. by taking advantage of the additional cores and the additional threads that the, the processor comes with. Other than and so that's a very special use case. Though, yeah, that's right? what they. Um, I think I think what they start calling hyper users, not mm -hmm. even like super users. Yeah. Um, they're they're playing a game in in 60 frames and. 1080p or higher and on one monitor, and, and yeah, you they're, have they're another streaming one. or looking at you know Twitch chat or something else on the other. Um, that's obviously not everybody, but if you're doing some sort of, of entertainment and you want to stream it and you want to do something else, you probably have stuff running in the background. You probably have voice chat apps running in the background. Um, you don't have to worry about slowdown; it's going to crush it. Um, let's take another question. Someone is asking about the Spectre and Meltdown uh, security flaws with Intel chips. Is there anything like people should be thinking about when they're purchasing a new PC now regarding that? Yeah, so there's a couple things. One, you should make sure that your system is up to date. Uh, typically, Windows updates are automatic, um, but <laughs> aggressively that, so. they're, they're aggressively automatic. I, I, you know, it's a bit, um, Recommending constant updates is, is not always the, the best choice for, for everyone, but in this case, um, security-wise, it definitely is because mm. uh, there are two levels of patches for those spe Spectre and Meltdown bugs, which, to for, as a very simplification overview, basically, it affects the instructions on a CPU level, so it's a very difficult problem to solve. What they've done is they've patched both firmware and hardware, and depending on the computer manufacturer, um, all of those updates will either be delivered through Windows Update automatically or you'll visit the website, so you'd visit the Acer website to download the most up-to-date firmware for the system. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, pretty much every modern processor has a software or firmware fix for those two bugs at this point. So the short answer is make sure that your system is up-to-date. Um, if you buy it and bring it home from the, from the store right away, you'll want to probably update it because that machine may have been sitting there for a couple of months and yeah. might not be updated. So short answer is 
most systems with modern processors have been fixed at this point. Right. Um, was there anything on, because um, I know for a while, maybe you know, there was fear that uh, the fixes would cause performance drops. Was there, but was there a final? On a system like this, it doesn't matter. You have such a high <laughs> ceiling that your performance drop, uh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, so on everyday tasks, we, we actually did a little bit of, of testing with systems, the exact same systems before and after the patch was applied. We didn't see that much performance difference on, um, on those systems, mainly mainstream consumer laptops. Mm -hmm. There was a, 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 a small hit in terms of like everyday performance in terms of uh, internet browsing, things like that, but you won't really notice that. Um, you, you're far more likely to notice slowdowns due to bloatware or a slower hard drive than you are the fixes for those Yeah, it's like, it's like an inefficient software is running. It's yeah. just ding, digging your performance slightly. Yeah. another question. Is this Intel or uh, AMD? This is an processor? Intel build. It's an Intel Core i9 um, 18 core processor. Yeah, this is a this pre, you know, Core i9 and a 1080 Ti that we've seen systems like that before. This yeah. is not like a brand new uh, AMD Ryzen no, uh, yeah. thing that we don't know about. I mean, this is fairly, you, you know what you're getting here. Yeah, <laughs> um, and on that note. Speaking of which, yeah, what are you getting? Run to the uh, benchmark tests. Um, so <clears throat> this is where the processor can sort of, sort of flex its muscles. Um, it's the 7980XE. Uh, it's clocked at 2.6 gigahertz, but there's 18 cores. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> so the PZ Mark 8 test is a good is a good example of how it, it, you yes it has it's fast to begin with but the the benefits of so many cores doesn't really begin to show um, until you stress them out with like the media tests so <clears throat> yes the PC Mark 8 score is high it's higher than some others but it's not it's not off the charts um, it's worth noting the Falcon Northwest has the same uh, the yeah. same CPU they're really diminishing returns here yeah. though I mean once you get above three thousand you're, you're you're good yeah. Um, the Threadripper, you can see the Alienware that you mentioned uh, has a, a Ryzen, um, the Threadripper 1950X, right. so, and as does the Genesis, so if you want to compare, uh, you can see in this chart kind of the differences. The Intel um, chips are better, but you know, they're kind of the top of the line insane ones. Um, 22 seconds on handbrake, super, uh, the, the jump on Cinebench <laughs> for these systems is, is yeah. insane. Um, so there you go, that's actually the, the multiple processors, or sorry, the multiple cores and stuff, the Cinebench column is what you really want to look at. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, it, uh, the jump up is kind of insane. Um, you can see the iMac Pro, obviously a fast, expensive, what is it, $4,000, $5,000 yeah, desktop. Yeah, $5,000, yeah. Yes, this is several thousand dollars more, but you can also get this, this CPU in, in a system that's not yeah. quite this expensive. Um, and you can see the difference. I mean, it-, it And those it are almost, all cores, basically. Right, and it, it almost triples the, uh, the, the score on Cinebench. So yeah. um, Media Pros, if you can spend the money on something like this, Go for it. Um, and again, Photoshop running filters and stuff. Uh, the only really, the only thing that, that killed it was the Falcon Northwest. I guess it has a higher clock speed, so it's the same processor running higher clock. So mm -hmm. it's just a little faster. And so we, and also to know, we test these in the default configuration. So um, while you could probably run the Acer Predator or Ryan 9000 at 4.4 gigahertz, we did not because that's what it, it comes with. Is, right. that, is that, am I right on that? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, these are default out of the box. Also, yeah. I, I think I left the turbo numbers on because I sort of my stance of why would you not use the turbo Okay. to so show what is, it can do. So this is with turbo, so it's probably slightly it's probably higher than 2.6, but it's not 4.4, but you yeah. could run it at 4.4 because it's the yeah, same Yeah, it added process. about 500 points to Cinebench. Yeah. Um, so it was like, yeah, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna talk about like top performance of this system, that's, yeah. Right. Um, since it's pre-built and there's a button, I didn't feel, I didn't have to do tinkering for that. I just right. clicked the button. Now, so before we fine. get to graphics, let's take a question. Yes. How is the cooling performance overall? Um, because of all the, the considerations they, they included, like the, the, as I said, the Ice Tunnel 2.0, um, it's pretty good. It's quiet. It, it expels heat out the back, as you'd expect, um, but even then, not like a ton. Um, it's quiet for the most part. Yeah, it's very quiet right now. I was expecting it to be much louder. I mean, there are six fans on this. Right, thing, yeah, for right? something so big, um, five. it's five running fans. efficiently. It's pulling in from here. Here's that little guide I talked about that pulls air in and puts it to the back of the system. It's just a plastic vent that directs the air. Uh, the PSU is, is shrouded. It's not, it's not putting heat onto the system. Uh, the GPUs here are, um, are, again, they're cooled. They have their own fans. This fan's going on here. It's, uh, it's, it's quiet and cool for the most part. Even like spooled up during testing, it wasn't whirring at me like aggressively loudly mm -hmm. as some systems do. Um, back to now the 3D scores. This is why you want the dual uh, GTX 1080 Ti's. Um, again, having one of those would be great. Having two is, is insane. Um, never mind 60 frames per second 4K gaming. You could do 80 or higher frames, 60, sure. uh, 80 or higher frames per second 4K gaming. Um, 4K is super hard to push for most things. A single card really struggles with it. A 1080 Ti can do it. Probably won't get 60 all the time. Um, so this is obviously the column to look at. That's the 
all the all the um, all these settings on Heaven and Valley set to ultra and running at 4K. You can see the 1080p scores. I mean, you get 200 frames per second. It's yeah, kind of, it's, a, it's kind of absurd. Um, it tops out the test basically. Like right. there's no. And so the thing to note with that is that when you're getting those 80 frames per second at mm -hmm. 4K with quality settings maxed out, you really want a capable gaming monitor to plug this into, or maybe two gaming monitors to plug this into, because yeah. anything above 60 frames per second is not going to show up great or make a difference on your budget uh, monitor that, that only has a 60 hertz refresh rate. So right. you, you want a nice monitor to go with. Exactly. It. This is where this is where it pays to get like a super high refresh rate monitor, yeah. G-Sync, uh, yeah. throw it in there. Um, this is sort of some of the only systems that can take advantage, like real advantage of those high end monitors, are things that are configured. Uh, like this. The only thing that beats it, as you can see, the Falcon Northwest, uh, you may notice, has two Titan XPs <laughs> instead of 1080 Ti's, yeah. which is, I mean, like, it's kind of out of control. Like, no one, and those <laughs> no one needs that much power, right. but sure. The Titan XP is kind of like a, we built this to show what our engineers can do, but but it's really overkill. I yeah. mean, yeah. The, the, that this is like, yeah, the, yeah. the uh, a dual GTX 1080 is the pinnacle. More than enough. Yeah, <laughs> XPs are rare. Not even everyone has XPs to put in. Right. Uh, Falcon Northwest has has some on hand, right. and that's like nearly 100 frames per second at 4K, yeah. which is pretty nuts. Um, so yeah, raw 3D power in this is is kind of insane. Um, and that that's kind of the bottom line. I mean, obviously, any gaming if you're going to spend this much is is well within your reach. You can of course put it to maximum settings and not think about it again. Right, <laughs> like, exactly. Any game, just throw it on max. It's gonna and run. And not only that, any game plus anything else you want to do at the same time. Right. I mean that that's the, the, there's really nothing that you are gonna feel limited by yeah. this system. I think. And if you are, just boost the clock speed, and you know, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only thing I guess I would say is that SLI can be annoying sometimes. But I SLI'd my machine for the first time, and it's not that bad. People, it has a bad rap, but. I think there's a, a, every every hand, every couple games has a weird sort of uh, of incompatibility thing. It's yeah. more on the games side right, than right. on the the hardware's fault. Most of the time, you get the performance of two cards. Which is my question. Why would I get two 1080 Ti's when I could get a car? <laughs> that's great. <laughs> you know what? You're not. The sad thing is, it's like yeah. actually realistic. And, and but see, in addition to that, let me let me let me see you that question. And raise you by. The why not? Get, why would you get two Titan XPs on that <laughs> on the Origin machine? I mean, the, the the yeah, like 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 I said with the PC Mark scores, there are diminishing returns here. Yeah. If you are you know getting 80 frames per second in 4K, you you don't need that. You sure. Could, you can do well with 60 frames per second. And yeah, 4K. don't get something like this if you're gonna play at 1080p, please. You're, yeah. You're wasting your money. Yeah. Or, or um, yeah, right. Yeah. Or even or even. QHD, yeah. like don't, 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 <laughs> just don't. <laughs> yeah, don't play at 1440p, 144 hertz, and buy this. And also check to make sure that, yeah, check check the games that you play to make sure that that a dual card configuration will work with yeah. them, right? That's yeah. another. I'm running 980 Ti's at home, dual, and I gotta say, like everything still runs at max for the okay. most part. I'm, I'm playing at 1440p. Um, no, I don't have like a super high refresh rate monitor or anything, but like that's a last generation card, and Nvidia made their last card so good that I still yeah. haven't upgraded. <laughs> so right, like right. I don't know. Exactly. Um, yeah, so any you know, uh, you're you're set with this, or even with if you buy the lower configuration, the one 1080 Ti is, is it's right. an insanely good card. So we have to dock this a few star. Like it's an excellent machine, but we right. have to dock it a few stars just because of the limited use case for this. This additional power for yeah, the eight thousand dollar model. Yeah, it's a 3.5 right? review. There's nothing necessarily wrong with it. My cons are that it's huge <laughs> and heavy, which yeah. it is. Everyone's yeah. not gonna like the style. Um, it's made of plastic. The more the physicality of it. Um, is uh, my console related to that? Yeah. Because like, you know, I mean, it's not it's not the it's not the most insane thing for that much money. The performance is the visual. It does look kind of neat. It's kind of eye catching. I don't I don't hate the lights. I don't right. hate the front. Um, but I don't think it's like there's there's some machines from like the boutique manufacturers, Falcon Northwest, um, Origin, uh, Main Gear, that um, come with crazy custom cooling piping, uh, all this custom work and. And they're really fit to order, uh, built to order, and they do some paint jobs. And uh, the Falcon Northwest Talon in there, it's also not the showiest machine on the inside. It's actually really plain inside, but the box is a, it's just an automotive painted kind of, yeah. it's all metal, and it, it, right. it feels at least like you, um, like it's a high end thing. Right, but if you don't care about that, if all you want is raw power and wheels to, care, to wheel this thing around, this for you is probably a five star machine. Yes. It's just we, you know, there, it, it's so specific to your needs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the Acer Predator Orion nine thousand uh, is anywhere between twenty five hundred and up towards uh, near as makes no difference ten thousand. 
Um, so yeah, so check out the full, full review at PCMag.com. Thank you very much for watching and, and uh, asking your questions. Uh, we are going to go hang up our headset mm -hmm. on this thing right here uh, and then just enjoy looking at this for the rest of the day uh, <laughs> until we see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time for yet another One Cool Thing.